Once upon a time, in the enchanting kingdom of Orea, the king and his valiant knights embarked on a daring quest. Their mission? To track down a fearsome dragon rumored to be lurking in the hills. Venturing into a mysterious cave, they stumbled upon a sight that sent shivers down their spines. But before they could react, the dragon emerged, unleashing its fiery breath upon the knights, swiftly ending their valiant endeavors. With ruthless efficiency, the dragon dispatched the remaining knights, leaving only the king trembling in fear. Centuries later, in a distant northern land, two sisters, Floria and Elodie, toiled tirelessly to aid their people amidst the harsh grip of winter's icy embrace. As the biting cold and hunger threatened their village's existence, hope arrived in an unexpected form. A carriage, an unusual sight in their secluded home, heralded a momentous encounter. Their father, Lord Bayford, and stepmother, Lady Bayford, conversed with a nun who brought news that would alter Elodie's fate forever. The royal family of Aurea sought her hand in marriage to their prince. Initially hesitant, Elodie's resolve wavered when faced with the promise of salvation for their suffering town. Succumbing to the weight of responsibility, she acquiesced to the union. Journeying to Aurea, they encountered eerie spectacles, including towering dragon statues and mysterious torchlit rituals. Despite the foreboding atmosphere, they marveled at the kingdom's opulence upon their arrival. As preparations for the wedding commenced, Elodie found herself drawn to Prince Henry, forging a connection amidst the swirling uncertainties. Their budding friendship blossomed, fueled by shared interests and mutual admiration. Yet, behind the facade of diplomacy, tensions simmered. Lord Bayford's troubled demeanor hinted at undisclosed burdens, while Lady Bayford's attempts to bridge the gap between families were met with icy disdain from Queen Isabel. In a poignant exchange, Isabel revealed the transactional nature of their alliance, dismissing notions of genuine connection. Reminded of her humble origins, Lady Bayford's efforts to correct Isabel's mispronunciation of Elodie's name were met with indifference, underscoring the gaping divide between their worlds. Amidst the glittering splendor of the royal court, Alliances forged and futures entwined, Elodie navigated the delicate balance between duty and desire, unaware of the trials that lay ahead in her newfound kingdom. As twilight settles, a concerned Lady Bayford seeks out Elodie, whispering of unsettling developments that cast doubt upon the impending wedding. Before they can delve deeper into their discussion, Lord Bayford intervenes, dispersing the gathering and urging everyone to retire for the night. Morning arrives, ushering in a flurry of activity as maids assist Elodie in preparing for the momentous ceremony. Adorned in a splendid gown adorned with peculiar accoutrements, a blunt dagger and a perfume diffuser, Elodie brims with anticipation as she steps into her role as bride. The wedding proceeds without a hitch. Vows exchanged, rings bestowed, and a tender kiss shared between Henry and Elodie, sealing their union. Crowned and radiant, Elodie bids farewell to her family, embarking on a carriage journey with Henry. En route to the enigmatic mountain ceremony, Elodie's unease intensifies as they ascend rocky stairs to encounter a peculiar congregation wearing eerie golden masks. Isabel, donned in nun's garb, bestows upon Elodie a coin signifying her pivotal role in safeguarding the kingdom, preceding a solemn recounting of ancestral lore. Mesmerized yet wary of the assembled throng's unnerving scrutiny, Elodie's apprehension peaks as Isabel orchestrates a blood ritual, binding Elodie and Henry in an ancient pact. But as the ceremony reaches its climax, treachery unveils its grim visage. Henry's betrayal, plunging Elodie into the gaping chasm below. Amidst pain and confusion, Elodie awakens battered but resolute, her resolve unbroken despite the harrowing ordeal. Discarding her ornate trappings, she confronts the chilling truth of the royal family's sinister legacy, their sacrificial rites laid bare in the depths of the cavern. A flicker of hope ignites as Elodie encounters a flaming bird, her instinctual compassion extinguishing the creature's flames too late to save it. Yet, her altruism unwittingly summons a haunting spectacle. A procession of fiery avian spirits casting an eerie glow upon her path. Haunted by the dragon's ominous decree, Elodie's flight is halted as the ancient guardian confronts her, 
its words laden with centuries-old resentment. Amidst the cavern's shadowy confines, Elodie braces herself, determined to defy the fateful legacy that threatens to consume her. Examining her scar, Elodie grasps the true purpose behind the enigmatic ceremony, a ploy to outsmart the dragon. Urged by the ancient guardian's warning, she flees in terror, her cries echoing through the cavern as flames lick at her heels. In a desperate bid for survival, Elodie navigates treacherous tunnels, encountering the charred remains of a previous victim, the girl from the balcony. Evading the dragon's wrath, she struggles through narrow passages, her gown ensnaring her progress until she's forced to discard it. Bearing wounds both physical and emotional, Elodie forges ahead, utilizing the dagger and a makeshift lantern fashioned from the diffuser to light her path. Through perseverance and resourcefulness, she braves perilous terrain, clinging to hope amidst the darkness. Encountering bioluminescent slugs and an icy spring, Elodie sustains herself, though the dragon's relentless pursuit looms ever closer. Seeking refuge in a hidden alcove, she discovers a haunting testament to the sacrifices that came before her. Haunted by spectral apparitions, Elodie grapples with doubt and despair until the miraculous healing properties of the slugs offer respite. Empowered by newfound strength, she resolves to press onward, guided by a cryptic message and a map hinting at escape. With determination as her compass, Elodie sheds the trappings of her former life, embracing her fate as she follows the crystalline melody towards freedom. Scaling the rocky walls with newfound resolve, she emerges into the sunlight a survivor forged in the crucible of adversity. Unbeknownst to Elodie, the dragon lurks in the shadows as she ascends, a misplaced step causing a crystal to shatter beneath her grasp. With a desperate clutch, she clings to the crown, her heart pounding with fear as the dragon's ominous presence draws near. At last, Elodie emerges into the light, only to confront a precipice overlooking a daunting abyss. Overwhelmed by despair, she collapses, tears mingling with her anguish. But hope flickers anew as the distant sound of hooves heralds the arrival of a rescue party. Yet, before Elodie can call out for aid, the dragon swoops in, sealing her fate within the mountain's embrace. As the dragon's attention wanes, Elodie stumbles upon a chilling revelation, a grim message left by Victoria, a tragic reminder of past sacrifices. With a heavy heart, she presses onward, guided by the faint echo of her father's voice. Exploring deeper, Elodie stumbles upon a nest of slain dragon hatchlings, shattering Isabel's deceitful narrative. A harrowing flashback unveils the truth of the dragon's vendetta, exposing the royal family's sinister machinations. Reunited with her father's party, Elodie bides her time, observing the dragon's ruthless interrogation of Lord Bayford. In a final act of bravery, Bayford sacrifices himself to protect his daughter, his poignant plea echoing through the cavern. Heartbroken yet resolute, Elodie bids her father farewell, seizing the rope he left behind to begin her ascent. With the dragon in pursuit, she scales the treacherous path, narrowly evading the inferno that engulfs the entrance. Taking refuge beneath the safety of rocks, Elodie devises a cunning ruse, diverting the dragon's attention away from her perilous escape. With a heavy heart and a newfound determination, she embarks on a journey fraught with danger, guided by the flickering light of hope. As the dragon's fiery display signals a broken pact, chaos descends upon the castle. Isabel's ruthless machinations are laid bare as she dispatches her knights to seize Floria, with Lady Bayford falling victim to their treachery. Emerging from her refuge, Elodie encounters her wounded stepmother, her resolve stealing as she learns of Floria's plight. Promising to rescue her sister, Elodie mounts a horse and races back to the mountain. Meanwhile, Floria finds herself at the mercy of Isabel's twisted ambitions, her innocence exploited in a macabre ritual. But as Elodie arrives too late, the dragon seizes Floria, using her as bait to lure Elodie into her clutches. Undeterred, Elodie descends once more into the depths of the mountain, armed with newfound determination. With cunning and courage, she devises a trap to ensnare the dragon, rallying Floria to her side. Confronting the dragon in a fierce battle, 
Elodie risks everything to expose the truth. With each blow exchanged, she refuses to succumb to the cycle of violence, ultimately defeating the dragon with a clever maneuver. In the aftermath, Elodie extends mercy to her fallen foe, offering healing instead of vengeance. As the castle crumbles and justice is served, Elodie, Floria, and Lady Bayford set sail, united in their resolve to rebuild their land. Amidst the rubble of the past, Elodie finds a new family and a renewed sense of purpose, forging a future built on unity and compassion. And as they sail towards the horizon, a silent acknowledgement passes between Elodie and the dragon, a testament to the power of forgiveness and redemption.